Okay, so we're going to look at the central limit theorem. Um, newborn babies have a birth weight which are normally distributed with a mean of 120 ounces and a standard deviation of 20 ounces. Uh, in part one, a random child is chosen. What is the probability that their weight is A, at least 110 ounces, and B, no more than 125 ounces? In part two, parts A and B are similar, but we're not choosing a random child, we're choosing a sample of 30 children. Um, and when we choose that sample of 30 children, we won't be looking at the probability a single weight, we'll be looking at the probability that their sample mean weight. So number one is going to be similar to everything we've done previously for normal distributions. And number two is where we will bring in the central limit theorem. So a random child is chosen. What is the probability of their, mean, their weight is? So in choosing an individual child, we use the original distribution, which is normal, with a mean of 120 and a standard deviation of 20. So in our picture, we draw a normal curve with 120 in the middle and put three tick marks going out in either direction. Each, as we get to the third tick mark, we should be well into our tail the end of the normal distribution on either side and each check mark is going to represent a distance of the standard distribution 20. So in part A, probability that at least the, the, the child weighs at least 110 ounces. So 110 ounces would be halfway between the, this tick mark and 120. So right in here would be one, 110 and We'll shade everything, at least 110 will be everything to the right of 110. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 110 is going to be the area to the right. And again, to be careful there because Excel will only give us areas to the left. So that's 1 minus the area to the left. And we'll plug that into Excel using normal distribution. Mm -hmm. And we'll get one minus norm.distribution, x is 110, the mean is 120, standard deviation is 20, and the cumulative value is true. And we get 0 0.6915. And again, you know, halfway would be 50%, so it's more than 50%, in fact, it's almost 70%. Part B, Find the probability a single child weighs no more than 125 ounces. So probability that X is less than or equal to 125. You know, more than 125 would be greater than 125. So no more than 125 is a less than or equal to. Um, and actually with these continuous distributions, if I choose to have the equality inside this comparison or not, it's actually the same value because remember uh, that the probability that x equals any single value for a continuous distribution is always zero. But just for the translation's sake, I'll leave the equality in for both because technically it would be there. So here we're looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to 125. And so where is 125 in my normal distribution? Well, again, one tick mark away would be 140. So it's about a, not about, it's a quarter of the way through there would be the 125. And we want everything to the left of 125. And again, you can see that area is going to be a little bit bigger than 50%. But we plug it in. Again, now it is an area on the left. So we can just plug it directly into Excel. Normal distribution, x125, the mean 120, standard deviation 20, cumulative value is true, mm -hmm. and we get 0.5987. For the second problem, we're looking at a sample of 30 children being chosen, and we're trying to find the probability that their sample mean weight is, so the key words here are that we have a sample of 30 children and that we're looking for probabilities for their sample mean weight. Those two things tell us 
we're using the central limit theorem. And so in that central limit theorem, we need to know n. So n is 30. And using the central limit theorem, what it tells us is that the distribution of the sample means, so x bar, has a normal distribution with the same mean. So the mean is still 120. But now the standard deviation is the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n, in this case, the square root of 30. When I do my computations in Excel, I will use this number for my standard deviations. But for my picture, I kind of need to know how big that is. So um, to figure out what that new standard deviation is, plug that in to my calculator or into Excel, and I get approximately 3.65. So now the picture is the same. I've got 120 in the middle, but now each tick mark represents 3.65. So if we look at part A, we want the probability that the sample mean is at least 110. So now that's no longer x, that's now x bar. And 110 with respect to this new standard deviation of 3.65, so that, that's like 3.65 to the left, 3.65 more, that's like maybe a little more than seven. Little, the third one would be um, past 110. So 110 is, is real close to the third one. Three times 3.65 is a little bigger than 10. So uh, I stop here at 110 and I shade everything to the right. Again, I'm looking for an area to the right. We can see it's most of the area for the normal distribution. So it should be a pretty large percentage. Um, but the area to the right is going to be 1 minus the area to the left. And plugging that into Excel. 1 minus the normal distribution, now we have 110, 120, and you can see here I plug in the exact value for the standard di distribution, or standard deviation, excuse me. I don't use the approximated value. Um, I don't want to approximate my answer until I get to the end when I usually approximate it to four decimal places. Cumulative value is true, and now we see it's 99.9969, so almost the entire area. The next part says, what's the probability that the sample mean is no more than 125 ounces? So now again, what changes is the X bar inside here, as opposed to X, and it needs to be less than or equal to 125. And in our picture, if each tick mark is 3.65 away, that would be 123.65. That'd be like 127. So it's somewhere between the second and third tick mark. And I just draw a line up here at 125. And we're looking for everything to the left of that. So I've shaded that in already. And it's an area to the left, so we can plug that directly into Excel. Probability that x bar is less than or equal to 125. Norm dot distribution, 125 for x, 120 for our mean. Again, plugging in the exact value of my standard deviation, 20 divided by the square root of 30. And the cumulative value, we want everything to the left of 125, true. And that percentage is 0 0.9145. And then just kind of re recap the whole problem. Um, when we're here in chapter seven, what we're looking at is whether or not we're looking at an individual, which involves x, the original distribution, or a sample, which involves x bar, the new distribution, which is always normal, and which has a stand uh, the same mean, but a standard deviation, which is the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So uh, to recap this problem, part one, we're choosing a single child and we're using a normal distribution for x. So x is normal with a mean of 120 and a standard deviation of 20. So each tick mark as we go out from the mean represents 20. So 110 is very close to the mean. And when we look at the probability that x is bigger than or equal to 110, we get about 70%. Again, 125 is also close to the mean because each tick mark represents 20. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 125 is about 60%. In the second problem, we have a sample of a sample of 30 children are chosen. So n equals 30. And the central limit theorem again gives us a normal distribution with the same mean, but now the standard deviation is 20 divided by the square root of 30. So what that does is it moves it, um, I'm gonna pause for one second. 
But yeah, in the second part, the sample of 30 children is where we're using the central limit theorem. In the problem, we have to recognize that n is now 30, and we're not looking at probabilities for x, we're looking at probabilities for the sample mean, x bar. Um, and then, you know, a distance of 10 away now from the mean, you know, each tick mark now represents the new standard deviation, which is much smaller. It's 20 divided by the square root of 30, about 3.65. So I figured that out so I can draw my picture and figure out about where the new, the new values of 110 and 125 are respectively. And we can see that these areas end up being uh, much, much different answers than our original answers because um, if your picture is representative, meaning your tick marks represent the standard deviation, you can see the difference between how far from the mean you are. Here, the 110 is very close to the mean, but down here, 110 is much farther away. So upstairs, we get a little more than 50%, 59 or 69%. Downstairs, it's 99% much more data. Um, for the second part, same thing, close to the mean, it's like 60% of the area shaded, but downstairs were much farther away and we ended up shading you know, a little more than 